So I'm a MacBook Pro user and have been for quite a while now. I've never used a MacBook Air personally, but Huawei's 2024 MateBook X Pro seems to pack Pro hardware in an air light build, but does it actually deliver? Well, that's what we're about to find out. The full name of Huawei's flagship laptop is the MateBook X Pro Core Ultra Premium Edition, and its box certainly screams premium. Inside of this box, you will find the Core Ultra 9 powered laptop, a massive 90 watt charging block, a thick 5 amp charging cable, a USB-C to A adapter cable, and even USB-C earphones since there was no room for a headphone jack. Huawei's latest MateBook starts at 2,000 euros or 40,000 Rand for the base variant, which comes with 16 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte of storage, and an Intel Core Ultra 7 processor. I have the top end variant, which sets you back 2,500 euros or 45,000 Rand, but it comes with double the RAM and storage and packs in a Core Ultra 9 CPU. Now that's far from cheap, but it sits in the middle of the latest MacBook Pros and Airs prices and is in line with the latest Samsung Snapdragon. Dragon powered laptops. The 2024 MateBook X Pro comes in three different colors, namely white, black, and Morandi blue, which is the color that I have and seems to be the only option for the top end Ultra 9 model. The white color has a black keyboard, while the black and blue colors have color matched keyboards. The entire laptop from in to out boasts a magnesium alloy material, which is coated with silky smooth paint for a soft touching matte finish. This lightweight material, alongside other lighter components such as the OLED display, means that this is one of the lightest laptops in the world, coming in at just 980 grams and slim too at just 13.5 millimeters thick, which is insane when you consider its performance, but we'll get to that a little later on. The keyboard goes from end to end aside from the speaker grills on each side, the trackpad is massive which goes to the edge of the base much like an infinity pool, and the display can open quite a bit but it doesn't exactly go flat. There's two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports on the left of the the base and one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port on the right. All three ports support external displays, transferring and charging. There is unfortunately no USB-A ports, but at least there is an adapter in the box. And there is no headphone jack, but they try and make up for it with a free pair of USB-C earphones. There's also no SD card slots, which is a must for video editors. And there is no full-sized HDMI ports, but again, you can just use those Type-C ports as display ports. Next to the right side USB-C ports, there's a privacy switch, which physically powers off the camera. The camera is found in the center of the top bezel and next to it sits IR sensors for accurate facial recognition to unlock your laptop. There is also a fingerprint sensor packed into the power button found on the top right of the keyboard and it works incredibly well. Once you're in you'll notice very slim bezels wrapping around the new display which makes for an immersive 93% screen to body ratio and the display itself has been majorly upgraded. It's now a 14.2 inch flexible OLED panel with a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, 3.1k resolution with 200 164 ppi and since it's a 10-bit panel it can display over a billion colors and comes to life with adobe rgb srgb and dci p3 color gamma it now has a 120 hertz screen refresh rate with vrr and a response time below one millisecond thanks to it being oled as well as 1440 hertz pwm dimming and a very impressive peak brightness of 1000 nits another standout feature has to be the new magnetic controlled nano optical coating which reduces light reflections by 70%. And as you can see, it does a very good job when pointing the display at my very bright studio lights. And to round all of this off, the display is still a 10-point touchscreen panel, which is always handy for sketching, signing documents, or just Huawei's way of showing that this laptop has it all. Another important thing to keep in mind when buying a laptop is its ability to connect to external displays, and the 2024 MateBook X Pro had no issues doing so. I use the MateBook in my typical work setup, first connecting my 27 inch 4K monitor, which worked without problems, and then linking up my massive 49 inch 32 by nine aspect ratio 5K 2K display. I was extremely impressed to see the X Pro support both screens native aspect ratios and refresh rates, and even more impressed at how well it performed when working with two external monitors and its built-in screen. I never noticed any dip in performance when running daily tasks, watching videos, or even video editing when running two power hungry external displays 
which is a lot to say when considering the tiny form factor of this powerhouse laptop. The 2024 MateBook X Pro comes bundled with Windows 11 Pro, but for some reason my unit is running Windows 11 Home, which in all honesty isn't really any different. I'm sure you all know what Windows 11 can do by now, but Huawei have added in some noteworthy features such as the privacy switch, a face unlock and a fingerprint sensor which I showed off earlier. Other than these hardware features, they've also added in a Huawei PC manager and control panel which allows you to change quick settings on the fly and of course connect your other Huawei devices which allows you to control your phone screen on your laptop screen and transfer files which is always handy if you would like to make the most out of Huawei's ecosystem. The PC manager also allows you to adjust AI webcam features such as change the background, enable beauty mode, auto centering or even eye contact so it seems like you're always looking at the camera lens, though it's a bit more of a gimmick. The webcam itself has a 1080p resolution and it does a decent job, though you can also adjust the quad microphone setup through the control panel and it packs in superb noise cancelling microphones. The video quality is not exactly the best but it's still on par with other laptop webcams, however the microphone quality is on another level. And if you would like there is even a portrait blur video option and it works rather well. In the same Huawei sound menu, you can also adjust the speaker settings so that you can utilize that incredible sounding six speaker setup, which boasts two massive speaker grills on either side of the keyboard. Huawei Pure 70 Ultra has recently launched in the global market shortly after its Chinese debut and it is no doubt the most exciting Huawei flagship I have ever used. The box comes in a textured outside cover and the actual box is very classy. And lastly there is a feature called Free Touch in the control panel which lets you customize the touchpad. This includes sensitivity and most importantly vibration strength as it boasts an x-axis linear motor for haptic feedback when using the trackpad and it feels really good. There are also multiple different gestures for those who can multitask, but the main standout is its large size and stunning looks thanks to it falling off the edge of the base. But sometimes my palm accidentally clips the corner of the touchpad which takes some getting used to when typing on the keyboard. The keyboard itself unfortunately doesn't have a numpad, but that's no surprise due to its small form factor. It does however have a very good layout, keys are spaced out nicely and the keys themselves feel clicky and premium. The keyboard feels just as robust as my MacBook Pro's keyboard. The keyboard is of course also backlit and has three modes, off, medium and high brightness which is plenty bright enough for those late night work sessions. There are small holes under the keyboard to let cold air in, intake vents on both sides of the body, another by the front hinge of the screen and two large exhaust vents at the back of the base. The cooling system is backed by dual shark fin fans, a large vapor chamber and AI temperature control so you'll never have to worry about the laptop getting too hot. This means that your device will be kept cool when using Huawei's dual cell charging technology with the included 90 watt charging block and supercharged turbo function. And so I decided to see how quick it could charge up. It was sitting at 2% when I plugged it in and if you take a look at the bottom right corner of the screenshot you'll see that the time only went up by 30 minutes while the battery jumped up all the way to 41%. That's 39% in just half an hour. The lithium battery has now been upgraded to a 70 watt hour capacity which is a lot larger than the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge and MacBook Air laptops and is on par with the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So once again I decided to test out its battery but it's worth mentioning that high performance mode was enabled and the brightness was sitting at just over halfway throughout the test. We started off at 95% and downloaded a 150 gig game with the screen on the entire time. The game finished downloading about 3 hours later and the battery dropped down to 48%. We then played the downloaded game for about 30 minutes and that brought us down to 9%. Lastly we watched YouTube for around 15 minutes and we ended off with just 2% left. So that's a 93% drain in just under 4 hours which isn't terrible considering we ran demanding tasks with high performance mode on and the screen remained on the whole time. If we used balanced battery mode and didn't play any games we'd most likely get double the screen on time but at the end of the day this laptop is running a 7 nanometer run Intel processor which isn't quite as efficient as the 4 nanometer run Snapdragon X Elite CPU but it is more powerful. The base model with less RAM and storage comes with an Intel Core Ultra 7 155H processor based on the same 7 nanometer node, but it's not quite as powerful as the Ultra 9 185H powering the top end model which I have with me here today. The Ultra 9 has 16 total cores and 22 total threads. 
These six performance cores use hyperthreading to add the extra six threads, and these cores have a max turbo frequency of a whopping 5.1 gigahertz. That's four more cores than the X Elite, and they are almost one gigahertz faster. The eight efficiency cores clock in at 3.8 gigahertz, and the two low power efficiency cores at 2.5 gigahertz. It's worth mentioning that while the Ultra 9 has 45 watt TDP, the MateBook brings it down to 40 watts. Both 2024 MateBook X Pro models rely on integrated graphics, that being the Intel Arc 128EU GPU. The Ultra 9 variant has a GPU frequency of 2.3 gigahertz, which is just 0.1 gigahertz more than the base model. Both of them support ray tracing, both have 8 XE cores, and both perform at 4.81 teraflops, which is higher than the 4.6 seen on the top-end Snapdragon X Elite Adreno GPU. The CPU is paired alongside either a 1 or 2 terabyte PCIe 4.0 SSD for storage, which received very impressive read and write speeds, leaving the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge's EUFS 4.0 storage in the dust. There's also 16 or 32 gigs of LPDDR5 5x RAM with a 6400 MTS transfer rate, so it's not quite as fast as the 8448 MTS speed found in the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. All of this computing power leads to a very pleasing time when video editing in Premiere Pro. Scrubbing around the timeline was only a tad slower compared to my MacBook Pro M1 Max, but of course proxies would make this an even smoother experience. Exporting the same 4K video in Premiere Pro had me very impressed to see the MateBook outperform my MacBook in terms of encoding time, especially considering my MacBook Pro is quite a lot larger and heavier. When it comes to benchmarks, I use the Snapdragon X Elite X1e84100 powered Galaxy Book 4 Edge as a reference, and the 2024 MateBook X Pro outperformed it in terms of multi-core performance in Cinebench, but it lagged slightly behind in terms of single-core score. It was a very similar case when testing out Geekbench 6 CPU in terms of single and multi-core performance, but the OpenCL and Vulkan GPU scores in Geekbench 6 had the MateBook come out on top by quite a large margin. Testing out GPU performance in 3 d Mark once again had the Ultra 9 seriously outperform the X Elite in Time Spy and Night Raid, which are both PC-level benchmark tests, but when testing out Wildlife Extreme, a mobile platform test, the X Elite came out slightly ahead. The MateBook X Pro has seriously impressed me in terms of hardware, translating to some very good benchmark scores. But the big question is, can it play games? It may be more suited to casual gaming due to it lacking a dedicated GPU, but it can run most modern AAA games at Full HD resolution and medium graphics. There's a program called Arc Control which lets you update GPU drivers and toggle some settings such as variable refresh rate which helps minimize screen tearing. I also made sure to enable performance mode and gaming boot times were more than fast enough. First up we played Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and while you have to drop the resolution to Full HD to get a decent frame rate, it's not really noticeable on such a small screen. I'll be running all the games we play today plugged in, but I did play all of these games on battery power, and there was no noticeable difference in frame rate, which is really good to know. Each game I'll be testing has a benchmark test, and that's what we'll be running here. We managed to get an average of around 32 FPS in Modern Warfare 3 when setting the resolution to 1280p, the graphics to balanced settings, and the field of view to its max 120 setting. Next we ran the benchmark in Forza Horizon 5, which looks more visually pleasing and unlike Call of Duty, it's more optimized for PC gaming, meaning we managed to get a higher frame rate averaging at around 53 FPS with the screen resolution set to 1280p and the graphics set to medium.
Lastly, we ran the Grand Theft Auto 5 benchmark, which is of course an older game and runs on DirectX 11. It may be older, but it's still a AAA title, and many fully rigged out gaming PCs at the time of its launch struggled to run the game. Fast forward to 2024, and the integrated GPU found inside the Matebook X Pro Premium Edition's Core Ultra 9 CPU had no problems averaging over 100 frames per second with the game set to 1280p resolution and medium graphics. Graphics. The Huawei Matebook X Pro Core Ultra Premium Edition may have a long name, but it has an even longer list of hardware specs and features. It might not have a dedicated GPU, but it plays games better than expected and is more than kitted up for video editing on the go. It might not have the most efficient CPU, but its large battery and fast charging certainly makes up for it. It's kept cool with an impressive cooling system, has rock solid speakers and microphones, packs in a pro worthy OLED display, and is bundled in an extremely small and lightweight build. It might be expensive and misses out on a few full sized ports as well as a headphone jack, but other than that, you are gonna struggle to find a better performing laptop that weighs under one kilogram. Let me know your thoughts on Huawei's latest flagship laptop in the comment section down below. This is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.